Let's continue infiltrating people's homes, shall we? A note reads, foreclosed by Martinez Realty Associates. I feel like this whole building's foreclosed. Hello. Look at the mattresses. Like, ugh. We saw somebody sleeping in the, um, in the, like, furnace room, too. The sea below right out this window. A shift in temperature. The air chills around you. Dust settles on the stony floor. Let's rub our sides for warmth. A former architect stands before a slice of window. A room plan in her hand. A cold wave has made the air in the building stand still and frozen. With temperatures falling down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Well, her face is red from the cold. She's breathing on her fingers, clasping for the, clasping the plan. Traces of sadness are visible in her expression. What about the plan? Faint pencil lines on paper depict the same place, but a missing eastern wall connects the room with the neighboring apartment. Ideas for arranging furniture have been jotted down. Look around. It's clean and empty, with new tapestry embellishing the walls. A standard HB graphite pencil has fallen off a three-legged stool in the middle of the room. She had an eye for beauty. Mm, shiver. That's like, we're getting these buffs to uh, shivers. Uh, a lot from this thought, basically doubling uh, where we started. Someone's torn down the wall. Yeah, to our benefit, I suppose. Oh, another refrigerator. Maybe this is a potential body storage. <laughs> Old grocery list on the table. What happened here? Well, you can't foreclose on an apartment with a hole in the wall. It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Well, yeah, but there's always a little something in the fridge. <laughs> Indeed. There you go. Hello. Weren't joking. Okay, so one thing we we really got to watch, or we might have to go and buy more drugs. <laughs> Our morale is uh, lower than I would like. I'm trying to just keep... Oh, actually, I just noticed this too. We're up to three charges of health. Why is that? Uh, endurance. Oh, it's because we uh, had a drink, I think. And so that boosted all of our uh, physique skills because he should be at base two. But that brings us up to the extra health. So, okay, let's see if we can't go outside up to that door 28, I believe. But I feel like if we stay kind of one below max, with health, it's, I guess, a little bit more uh, difficult to do that. But with morale, if we stay one below max, there are chances where we have uh, the ability to heal that up on some failed checks. Door to apartment 28. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Yes. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. Okay. No one answers. Looks like the young man we're looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. He looks around, taking in the cold spring air. We should return tomorrow after we've finished with our day's work around 9 o'clock. Sound good? Oh, uh, I guess. Sounds good. Tomorrow at 9. Tomorrow, 2100. Right here, apartment 28. Good. Let's go. Damn, turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry, you'll get him. Remember, tomorrow, he's probably gone for today. Okay. Well, hopefully we remember this. Uh, now, it said tomorrow after 2100. We'll see. We might, we might stop there later, but... Okay. Let's review. So, uh, fishing village, not open till tomorrow. Uh, working class husband, we'll keep our eye out for him. Send the body to processing, which we're going to do uh, later on tonight. Once Kim goes to bed, we're going to try and take the boots off. Uh, we need to go let Everart know we open the door. We need to prove authority to Titus. Uh, Lena Morel is missing. Uh, sorry, you told Lena Morel is missing because of the broken water lock. Uh, she is still worried he hasn't come back. So that'll probably happen tomorrow as well. Interrogate the drivers. I thought we had done this, but uh, we might have to go back to them and have a quick chat. Or maybe we're missing a driver altogether because we talked to one without Kim. So 
Finding all the armor pieces, hangman's boots we talked about, closing the trash. Who else has access to this? It might take a while. Reality lowdown from Joyce. Uh, secret passage. Still don't know how to find that. Victim's tattoos. Victim's armor. Call Alice back tomorrow. We called her back today. And we need to track down our badge. Who made the call? Don't know. Might take some time in singing karaoke. So, I think what we should do then is head back towards um, Everart. Just give me a heads up. Tell him we open the door. It's probably it's going to backfire heavily. This dude's probably going to die and it's going to be on our conscience. But, I mean, at this point, we basically don't have one. So, you know, it could be worse. Okay. Oh, you can see here this little icon showing uh, from the drinking. Yeah, cool. Okay, so here's the door we opened. I don't suppose we have a, a way up here yet. All right. Let's run all the way around this way. That's cool how the snow comes down and totally changes how everything looks. Like it doesn't just fall, but it actually like settles on the ground. Just out for our daily jog, no worries. Okay, so we talked to him. I'm just gonna see if anything new comes up here because now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. <laughs> I see that. It's on your mind. I see that. So nothing new there. There was the racist driver who was like, even if I did know anything, I wouldn't tell you. Looking for something. And then there was the other person like way in the back. So after Everart, we'll go talk to them with Kim, because the only time we got to talk to her was uh, when he was sleeping. Low on morale put points into volition. Oh, that's the first time I've seen that. We still don't have a way into here either. Uh, we don't have a way up to this rooftop yet, as far as I can tell. I'm just trying to make like mental notes of things that we've seen a few times that I want to come back to, but. Okay. Everart. I know this is going to screw me, but... Or this is ever We think this is Everard's brother, to be clear, because he's got the lazy eye. Yeah, Mr. see? Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you're already sat on that chair. <laughs> hey, uh, I opened the door, you asked me. Now, can we discuss that murder? Oh, very nice. Yeah, I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. Uh, one question. You didn't actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? This might be a trick question. He's trying to figure out if you're lying. Yeah. There's no way to sway this man in any direction. He's unsuggestible and unswayable. Just tell the truth. Uh, well, I, I, I may have gone inside and seen a collection of racist mugs. <laughs> Just as I thought. Culturally antiquated, antiquated mug collection. What a weasel. Pissing on Everard's Rainbow Coalition. He was testing you and you succeeded. You're damn right. Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed, who, and why. He pretends to roll up his sleeves. Real police work is going to start happening now. I promise you, Harry. This is going to be good. Uh, yeah, true. Mug collection. Found a similar mug in the trash. Connection between the lynching and the strike. I'd like to hear what you know about it. Which thing is more reasonable? Because I would say lynching and the strike, because we kind of know. But then those guys that were in the whirling and rags are basically saying that they did it. But I don't know. It's weird. Like, you're kind of like, well, they admitted to it, but without any real details. Let's see where the mug leads. Uh, the uh, the mug collection I, I mentioned was in the apartment, and I, I found a similar mug in the trash with the hangman's clothes. 
racist ones in the trash and in the apartment? You guys are just light years ahead of me. I have so much confidence in the ability of your organization. I'm relieved you're doing this and leaving me to do what I do best, helping people with the power of politics. Uh-huh. Uh, yes, yes. Do you think this weasel is somehow connected to the murder? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't cross paths like that. All I want is for you to succeed in your investigation. I would never complicate things for you. Oddly, it seems to be true. Yeah, but uh, the weasel might have cleaned up after the killers. <laughs> Believe me, Harry, he's a nobody. Just your basement variety nobody. Can't imagine him being connected to a high caliber case like this. If he's a nobody. Why is he wasting his time trying to deal with this nobody? But he does live nearby. Maybe it's a pedantic weasel. Fascists are known to be neat freaks. I feel like a real detective right now, Harry. Am I getting this right? He imitates bashing something with an imaginary baton. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah, that is pretty great technique, actually. He'd make a great sergeant. Uh, would he? I'm not so sure about it. Kim, quiet. Oh, you're too kind. Way too kind. I know you're not... I'm not a real police officer. You are. We, uh, we also heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike. I I'd like to hear what you know about it. By now, I'm sure you figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys, Wild Pines, sent to, sent to scare us. Another violent measure on the top hats against us flat caps. So, I don't know, is that true? Because he's part of, like, that mercenary group. Uh, uh, I'm listening. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. Uh, you mean our victim? He nods gravely. A security contractor. So they're saying, he's saying Wild Pines hired this group. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they said hired killers to mow us down with machine fire? Machine gun fire? I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Usage, Seminine, and Samarisa. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Everything they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Ravishal into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. Uh, wh hold, uh, what? Uh, you guys have a village elephant? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village, but the mercs and their brutality are very real. All right, go on. Now, I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go anywhere, they just move my container. Oh, uh, wait, they move the whole container? Yes, I'm an old man, Harry. My legs aren't what they used to be. They lift my office with that big crane. It's actually very fun. You should try it. But enough about me and my fun container. His face turned serious. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey, shakes his head. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out in trees. By negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, he just totally ignores him. <laughs> <laughs> what you need to realize is we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough and we push back. And when we do, he raises his finger, we push to kill. Wait, so you're telling me the whole neighborhood is in on it? Potentially, Harry, potentially. We got arm wrestling champions, rolling club people, ex-coal miners, tough guys all ready to spring into action for their home base. Well, who exactly did the pushing? <laughs> There's a militant wing inside the union, a group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. So the Hardy Boys? That sounds a bit like organized crime. <laughs> They're like you guys, idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen, and if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again, sounds like organized crime. Yeah, I mean, it does. So these idealists, they killed our victim? <laughs> One day, Titus Hardy, leader of the peacekeeping faction, <laughs> I love to call him a peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burning the land. So that's another thing that lines up with Titus anyway. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him, he chuckles. 
I gave him two weeks paid leave and told him to lay low to avoid retaliation. Aren't you worried we might arrest them for this? <laughs> oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martinez boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in, he chuckles. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to take after them. That's, uh, what's her name there? Uh, the one, I can't remember her name. He plays a lot of face in that loyal girl. Lawyer girl. Perhaps this is a tactical error. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and how do you know the mercenaries weren't were hired by the shipping company. How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their MO. It's what they do. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. I'll tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. I'm sure as hell not going to be surprised there's an army of scabs under my gates. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? <laughs> you said it. Hell, the fist slams on the desk again. One of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. Uh, yeah, I think the name of the company is Cornell this time. It might have been Sediment before. Of, of course, you're always one step ahead of me, Harry. I'm no genius. I'm in this position because people like me. He really plays down like... He's, he says like he knows everything, but then when we present something that we think he doesn't know, he's like, oh yeah, you're totally a step ahead. Like, I, I actually think he probably does know all of this already. Uh, yeah, you mentioned a lawyer girl. Oh, Liz is a bright one, he grins broadly. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy, but hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. All right, well, tell me about Titus Hardy and his crew. Oh, they are simply fine young men, all seven of them, exemplary union members, always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement, core members. Now, we know that there were eight footprints, right? One of them was like oddly shaped, or like smaller than the rest. So I, I guess maybe it could be Liz. She's like in on it, but who knows? Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titan t Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. He starts laughing. Gotta love his initiative. Interesting. Who's, who's second in command? And they're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martinez and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them, but don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. Hmm. Who's second in command? He says they're almost all... They are almost all of them great guys. Hmm. Okay. Listen, Evra, I, I met those hotties. Can you ask them to cooperate with me? Oh, but of course it's the least I could do for my good friend Harry. I'll do this right away after we've concluded this talk. You can now go and tell Titus about this. See what he has to say. Also, Harry, here's five real. He holds out a banknote. Uh... No, I, I I don't need it. I only wanted you to help me with the hardy boys. Oh, I wasn't offering it to you. Just holding it out there. He pockets the bill. But I am willing to share information. Was there anything else? Nah, good talk. We're good. <laughs> Was it a good talk? He leans back, suddenly worried. I'm not sure we made much headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. I don't know what happened, Harry. I, I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martinez, and of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. Great sadness comes over him. But it's like I can't completely trust you yet. See, he's, I think when he's giving us that money, like we took that check from him, I think he's trying to buy us. Um, yeah, that's the vibe I'm getting. Oh, what do you mean, yet? Which, yes, Harry, it's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. Huh. He says, slowly shaking his head. I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left, so you have to be a social democrat. He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. Hmm. We can just tell him what he wants to hear. Because we keep kind of riding that line. Hmm. Patriot of Revishal. 
<laughs> well, what's that supposed to mean anyway? I'm more left than you are. You're saying it, but I don't believe you. Biggest communism builder? <laughs> okay. You know how it is. Company snitches, agent provocateurs everywhere. I'm barricaded in this fortress of mine, and I need to get a message out. Will you help me? And what would this entail? <laughs> Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. Uh, what are the signatures for? I'm glad you asked, Harry. The union's going to build a modern youth center in Martinez. It will be righteous. We're going to get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. There's a nameless little street on the coast with some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground. Uh, Kim, what do you think about this? It depends. I, I don't think what we got from Mr. Clare was very useful. What do you think that's your call? And I said, it weighs on me heavily. He bows his head in, in shame, then looks up and smiles. But once we get really talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martinez and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. He's saying as little as possible, as vaguely as he can, deliberately omitting things. Yeah, you don't say. Uh, where is this place exactly? On the coast, Harry, across the canal, there's a cul-de-sac there, a little village they're calling it. A gloomy place. You'll find it. I trust your detective skills, Harry. Again, I think leading to that fishing village um, here, across the way, but we can't get there yet. So, tomorrow, though. So soon. Water drips from the eaves. A woman looks at her freshly tarred skiff. There's a pair of cavalry boots under the fish in the box, and the wind howls like a vicious spirit. And, uh, what will happen to the current occupants? Oh, they're just gonna have to deal with the construction noise for six months, then they'll be living like kings, right next to a fancy new youth center designed by the best architects from Stella Maris. Uh-huh. Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the streets? Uh, are you sure no one's gonna end up homeless? Can you give me that guarantee? Am I? The big man shakes his head in disbelief. Harry! These people, Martinez is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. We're going to build a youth center there. The value of their properties goes up and kids have a place to play in. Not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martinez, not just the harbor. Oh, fine. If I happen to be there, I can ask them, I suppose. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Had such a pleasure to be working with you here. Hands you an open white envelope. You need to get signatures from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I hear there's some trouble with the water lock, but they should fix it by Wednesday morning. All right. Once you have the signatures, mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then I'll know you're a solid socialist. And then he can get us some more information, probably. All right, Everart. Okay, jamais vu. This might be big. Might be big. Might be not, but might be. That's cool. Okay, minus one to encyclopedia. That's actually probably okay. Plus one XP for every orb clicked. I'm fine with the minus encyclopedia. Encyclopedia is a little bit overbearing anyways. Intellect learning caps is up and XP for orbs click. I click a lot of orbs. Too bad we wouldn't have gotten this like super early. Uh, jamais vu. The opposite of deja vu. Not already seen, but never seen. Everything that should be familiar appears strange and new, like some half-forgotten day in your childhood only now. That's the feeling you've been having. As for who knows how long? Oh, and for who knows how long? You should go and ask Joyce Messier about this and what world we're in. This is a fundamental question. I think that's actually a good way to spend uh, a chunk of our day here. Uh, I no longer have any other thoughts to process. What's here? Here's the white envelope. White envelope with the stamp attached in the upper right corner, handed to you by Everard Clare. Inside are some legal documents with two names printed on them, Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. Both signatures are required. You take the legal documents out of the envelope, a 12, 40 month, uh, 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan in the addendum. Ooh, interesting. Okay, okay. Let's look at the zoning plan. The youth center cuts into the ocean, like the bow of some great, or the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. 
It's going to be awfully close to the already existing buildings, almost wall to wall, practically integrating them into the youth center. Okay. This is almost, this is either ominous or cool architectural choice. Hard to say. My money's on cool. Looks like a cubic pyrite. Hey, uh, Kim, what do you think about this exactly? Uh, I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. Lieutenant replies, flipping through the documents. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but... How else are you going to build something? It's always inconvenient to build things. Citizens inevitably have disagreements over such construction projects, but there's no other way. Let's uh, see if we can find this. 83% now. There is no loophole. The simple truth is the current residents are going to lose their street access for the next 12 to 40 months. Their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. That freaking blows. <laughs> uh, man. Wait, so what are the ramifications of this? Oh, once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, and even the most stubborn occupants get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. That's probably the ultimate plan, is to build this youth center, quote unquote, and force people to leave the area, and then these guys like snap up the properties for cheap. Uh, look here, Kim. Uh, these people are going to have to move away. Can we do something about that? I should have seen it. The document frowns as... Or the lieutenant frowns as he reads over the document again. Everard probably has eyes on us, but we could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed, or you could forge their signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll already be gone. However, we'll need access to the coast before we do anything. Everard won't believe you got the villagers' signatures if you can't even get to the village. You can try a forgery as soon as we can cross the lock. Yeah, okay. I'm down with that. That might be like a... An interfacing check, maybe? Forge somewhere private where you feel safe enough to sleep. So our room, I guess. Find someone to sign the documents. Um, we'll hold this, this level up, I think. And I think what we'll do now is uh, head back to Joyce and have a real introspective conversation about, <laughs> about reality and other such things. Uh, where are we at with some checks here? Barbell, cafeteria, window. Uh, pile of Eternite. I'm actually not even sure where that is. It looks like in the middle of this area somewhere. Oh, it's behind the whirling in rags. Pile of Eternite. Okay. This is locked still? Yeah. On the way, we'll see if we can find this pile of Eternite. We can also, uh, when we were trying to do that check to look through the window, it said something about it wasn't time yet. So maybe it's later in the day now. Might have to be like straight up evening, but since we're passing by, we'll check. I wonder if I just click this. Let's see about getting in there. See, like, there's this thing. Hmm. Let's go in here. We'll, uh, we'll trade in our check, I guess, because I think that check said it could be redeemed here. Um, is this about the yeah, questions here we go. again? Because I don't really know anything. <laughs> Listen, I, I just need to exchange this novelty check for cash. <laughs> wow, I didn't know you worked for the union, sir. She rolls up her giant novelty check like she's seen it before and slips it under the counter. Anything else I can do for you? No, you don't work for the union. The union works for you by supplying you with cash. Yeah, exactly. Get real. Uh, so this is like we could buy drugs and stuff here if we wanted. Um, let's maybe get three Hypnogamma. Actually, wait. 
Hypnogam is going to restore three morale. I don't know if I really want to do that. We'll buy one of these just so we have a bit extra. And then this is what? Cigarettes. And wine. Hmm. Okay. So we'll take a peek in here. We'll take a look at see if we can find that Eternite. I, I can't remember what that is. And I guess we can try to talk to him again because uh, Everett Clark said so. 3%. Yeah, not time yet. All right. So I'm going to wait. And then here, Pile of Eternite. It's behind the Whirling and Rags. I don't think we have a way to talk to her. We also don't have a way to get in here. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Only warm primordial blackness. Your conscious for men sinny. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. 